So as a longtime blogger, I used to throw rumors into the world, you know, t tell you all about what Apple or Google or Microsoft's doing. But was I always accurate? No, nah, not really. <laughs> and neither are most, most of the professional bloggers. When you see an iPhone rumor or an Apple TV rumor or a Google thing rumor, uh, how do you know that that's accurate? Well, you don't, but Tracker built a system to track who is accurate and how often they are accurate so you know you can use, use that in your reading. It's really awesome. Who are you? I am Brad Sams, the founder of Tracor. Uh, I'm 26 years old from the Midwest. Uh, somebody who's always trying to change what we're looking at and just try to evolve the information that we have because I'm a big data fan. So whenever I can take a slice of data, look at it a different way and apply a new model, that's where I want to be. And that's, that's kind of what we've been working on and that's what I'm here to show you today. Yeah, and you've been in the tech journalism world or a tech fan or whatever. They tell me a little bit about- Very much so. Do. I am the, the senior news editor for Neowin.net. I've been writing uh, on that site for about six years. I've been covering Microsoft for probably all six years. Uh, really in depth the past four years, been to a bunch of the different conferences. Um, so anything that's in touching Microsoft, touching cell phones, uh, I'm definitely a big fan of. I'm also a, a big tablet fan as well. I'm highly anticipating that the Surface is going to do quite well for Microsoft. Um, uh, we will argue about that. <laughs> they are a late entrant. They have proven that they can do it. It's, it's I've been be going around the world and talking yeah. to, to developers, and they're not developing for it. And that is going to doom them. And they better their evangelism team better fix that. I used to be on the Microsoft yeah. evangelism team. And man, it, heads would roll if the numbers are true. <laughs> I think that the big argument about that, though, is that the enterprise. Microsoft has always been about enterprise. Yes, they have a, a fantastic consumer product, Windows and Windows 8. Um, but the Surface is going to ship with Office and it's gonna ship and it's gonna do it better than anybody else. And I think that's gonna be their key segment into that corporate environment is when they can come in and show Office at, it, at its core. They just said um, last week that it's at a billion users. A billion people using Office, that's a lot of people that know the product and they can get it in there. And if they don't deliver it on other platforms, as, as well as the Surface, they might have a, a fighting chance. It's not gonna be easy for Microsoft. Yeah. They're not gonna come out with an iPad that's gonna ship or, or sell, for that matter, 30 million units in the first quarter. Certainly not. They even said they only expect a couple million units. Yeah. Um, but it's about time that they start to make that bold step. They did a great job at actually surprising the world um, hats off to Microsoft that they were finally able to keep a secret that not everybody knew about. Now we can spend the whole interview talking about this because, <laughs> and, and this gets into our, both of our passions, which is the tech right. journalism world, the tech world, what's coming next. And when we talk about what's coming next, we always see these rumors, you know, a new exactly. iPhone coming, new Microsoft Surface coming, something's coming, and we don't know how to uh, evaluate whether that information is true or not, right? It, exactly, and that's how Trekur got got uh, got started. It actually was a graduate school project of mine, and is what we wanted to do was try to increase the signal and reduce the noise. Yeah. And how do you do that? Right now, there's a ton of information on the internet. We have DigiTimes uh, just sprouting rumors all the time. We hear things from China. We hear tweets. We hear Google Plus. Um, we hear sometimes some very reputable sites like the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or Engadget um, putting information out there. And it's always according to a source. Well, other than that site saying that source is good, we have no idea how it's doing. Yeah. We don't know if it's legitimate. We don't know if it's the taxi cab driver that, dri that used to drive Steve Jobs three years ago to the office. We don't know what that source is. So it's what we're trying to do, and we've actually already implemented, is we're tracking the domain, the author, the tags, and that actual what they call the source to see how accurate it is in the long term. Yeah. So is what you can part start to do is paint a picture of how accurate is DigiTimes. We can actually take DigiTimes, apply no tags, and just see the whole domain as it is. And right now it's in the 40% area that DigiTimes is accurate. But then you can actually break down DigiTimes by all the authors. You can take DigiTimes, and, and an interesting fact about Digi DigiTimes we did during this is that they actually said Microsoft was building the Surface tablet, they didn't call it the Surface tablet, a year ago in June, almost to the date of the announcement. So you start to think about that, and DigiTimes, okay, we know that was accurate, but all of their Apple rumors are hit or miss, such as they said AMD is gonna be shipping a notebook, 
um, that's going to be running OS X. That never happened. The, the infamous iPad mini that never really happened, but now the information is resurfacing. Yeah. Um, so we can actually break apart the domain even by authors. So now we're tracking authors independent of the domain. So if Robert Scoble introduces something on Engadget, for say, as, as, a, as an example, and then uh, Robert Scoble goes to The Verge, your information and profile information tracks with you. So then we can actually say, how accurate is Robert Scoble in the long run? How accurate is he on Apple rumors? How accurate is he on any are, different tag? Are you able to watch o only uh, major brands, or are you able to watch me on my blog and on Twitter? and on? Because if, if I have a rumor, I throw it on Twitter. <laughs> we can literally track anything. As yeah. long as it has a URL, as long as it has a tweet, and you can actually drill down to that specific tweet, we can track it. Um, we can track your Google Plus page. Uh, it is a little bit harder to call out the domain, but we can certainly take Robert Scoble and see all of his tweets if we wanted, all of his Google Plus, and actually go on and see how accurate you are on different metrics across all of your properties. Yeah. So it, uh, an author can't sandbag a site, per se, and then jump ship to another site and think that's just going to be okay. The information will follow him wherever he goes. Got it. Um, so you really know how accurate I am, even if I'm working for multiple publications. Exactly. That's really awesome. So if you write for, exactly, if you write for several publications, but let's say you only write Apple on one column, Microsoft on another, we can track that independently to see how you're doing versus. Let, let's say I tell you uh, the Apple TV 4.0 is going to have X, Y, Z. Yep. How, do you, how do you actually track whether that's accurate information when it ships? Fantastic if, or question. Or if it doesn't ship ever. How do, you, how do you mark that piece let, of information? Let me walk you through our workflow. Is, how, is what we're doing, it, it's kind of a semi-manual process and we're working to develop better algorithms. Um, right now, tracking the source information is hard to do because there's so many, as soon as you publish a tweet, 10 people are going to retweet it, 10 sites are going to rewrite it. So we actually have to drill all the way back into the source, which is a task that why nobody has done this before. But we, we'd rather get the data and work with the algorithms than try to get the algorithms to get the data because the data, is never going to change. The algorithms can always change. So right now is what happens is, is we see a link, we see something, we get flagged. We punch the URL into the database and it pre-populates certain content. It'll pre-populate the title, the author, um, if they have good standards, the first paragraph, and then we can apply tags or whoever submitting the rumor. The submission process is 100% user open to the freedom. I mean, it, anybody can do it. So then you submit that information, it goes into a bucket on our back end where it gets reviewed by a moderator. The moderator will review and make sure it's spelling accuracies, all that, and that it's a legitimate source, and then apply the necessary tags. And the, the key here is they apply a date. They will apply a date when they expect the rumor to expire. Sometimes, like the, uh, if they say October 30th for iPhone 5, we'll punch in October 30th. Yep. And is what that does is once they hit save, it moves it into the, queue, the, the waiting queue. And that waiting queue is based on the date. So when October 30th comes around, we get a little ping on the back end that says, hey, is this accurate? And then there's several different ways we can go about it. You can just. Now, some of my rumors that I've gotten, because I, I, I have good uh, contacts at Microsoft and Apple, some of them are, um, you know, some, sometimes I see signals from an, from an employee mm -hmm. and he says, you know, we're working on this new TV thing and it doesn't come out on October 30th. Yep. It, he says, man, we're aiming at October, yep. but it comes out in December. Does that count still as accurate or, or wholly inaccurate because they didn't hit the date? No. Or does it? And that's a very articulate problem that we're aware of. There's several different ways we can go about it because first off, we can edit anything. If, if yep. we see something that's expired, we marked it wrong, and let's say we go back and it's right, we can modify that with no problem. The, the back end is completely designed for that. Uh, the moderators have, several different positions they can take on it. If they, generally we have a good idea of something that's gonna happen. For example, the iPhone mini. That was a huge rumor for a while. It never, mater it never materialized. And so is what we can do is we can, we have two options. You can either put something as unrankable, which means it just kind of sits in the, into an unrankable queue, which is something we just can't tangibly do yet. Yeah. Or there's, um, you can also, actually there's three options. You could extend the date yeah. If you say it's going to be October-ish, we'll make sure that's in the notes, and then we could put it at the end of November, the end of December. And then the third option is, is that rumors are not holistically ranked yes or no. Yeah. It's zero to 100. So if you got, let's say, the date wrong, but the information right, then you got a 50 on it. And then we can break apart any rumor along any part of that scale to give a better representation of what the actual rumor was. Because, for example, dates are hard to get, but usually the information's correct. Yeah. So that way we can parse it out and get and get the whole picture in there of the rumor. So what's your goal in building this? Is it to 
become the ultimate rumor source so that we come in and watch your site for rumors because you 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 can know historically how accurate somebody is and we have a lot of plans for example we're gonna have a custom report writer where you can come and take robert scoble apple and a date and apply it to any time range um, we we envision apis where you could go a journalism student or whoever could write up a, a, a digi times rumor and then at the bottom is our little widget that actually shows how accurate they are um, as an end goal, though, all we're trying to do is just bring a little bit more clarity to the situation. We could eventually see maybe this someday helping search engines um, become more accurate because let's say 9 to 5 Mac and Mac rumors have the exact same story, a very, very similar information. Right now, Google and Bing and all that are using that based on their popularity and a couple other metrics. None of them are actually tracking if they're accurate in the yeah. long run. They want to see backlinks, they want to see social interaction, but none of them say, well, you know what, 9 to 5 Mac's at 90% and Mac and the other site's at 40%. So how, how can you adjust that? Um, that's one solution we end up seeing, but there's no real get rich quick scheme here. We're just trying to provide a solution to a problem yeah. that a lot of people face. Are you looking at other signals too? Because I, I know from studying other, other systems, like if we're betting on the Super Bowl, yeah. like if you ask enough people they actually arrive at an accurate answer a very high percentage of time, if you ask the right. crowd. The fantastic part about the whole product is all the hard work is done to regulate and moderate and track the rumors. Yeah. What you're talking about is changing the input system, which is very, very easy to do. We could easily introduce, start introducing in that situation like a poll saying what's going to be the spread on the long run on X game. It would be very simple to do, and that's actually a fantastic idea of a little module we could just simply bolt on. It would not be a problem, but we're also tracking things um, like analysts. Yeah. Analysts, let, like the IDC, I believe, said that Windows Phone will be the third most valuable platform in 2015. And then they came out with another report that was basically the exact same, but said 2016. It's like, what gives, guys? I mean, you made the same prediction last year. You're just bumping it out every year. We're tracking that type of yeah. information. Um, By the way, it has 3% market share right now. Uh, somebody got paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, there's definitely a long road ahead for Microsoft. Yeah. They've got some bright people there. They've got a good vision. And to be honest, it's, it's just nice to see them step out of the box for once. Yeah. They're not trying to copy Apple. They have their own. Oh, come on. <laughs> they have their own interface. Though. They, they've got their own product lineup. They've yeah. got their own direction. It's not. It's not the Microsoft of past where you have these different buckets fragmented yeah. and they're, they're pushing through, but it, it all goes back to developers and apps and they, they've got their work cut out for them. Can they do it? Certainly. Will it happen? Yeah. That's anybody's guess at this time. I think it's too early to call because Windows Phone So 8. can we use your system to see who's right? You know, is Microsoft going to succeed or not? The, or, the, or is it just you have to look at our past behavior and say, okay, this guy's been more accurate in the past at his predictions than uh, the other, interesting than, thing than Scoble is. The actual tracking of when content hits the wire. When do Apple rumors spike? When do Microsoft rumors spike? And then from that perspective, we can start to try to actually, in the long run, start to see development cycles, if you think about it. If, because rumors happen, a source gets some information, they pass it on to a site. Source gets information, they pass it on to us. That, that content happens all the time. Yeah. Eventually, once we have enough data and we've been tracking long enough, we're gonna to start to see when that cycles occur. And then we can actually go back, take that information and say, okay, we know that January information usually hits, which means it's usually ramping up in December. And we can start to make predictions based on that. Um, data is a very no, that, thing. But fear drives corporations as well. Why are we hearing about this iPad mini all of a sudden? Yeah. Because <laughs> the Nexus 7 came, came out, out for and it's $200. Yeah, it's a <laughs> fantastic price point. And, and that gets people afraid. And yeah. when you're afraid, you're like, oh, we got to uh, put a rumor of our own out there so that we keep people guessing yeah. and keep them from totally going that other way, right? Yeah. So, so let's talk about the interface here for a yeah. second. Is what happens when you go to trackhoover.com, you'll see, you'll, you'll see up top, you'll see the search. And that's your basic layout. You see the search up at the top and there's two columns going down the side. You will see expiring and you will see recently submitted. Is yeah. what this is, the left column are rumors that have already been in the database and they have been given a date. And on that date, it, they filter up. So if it's October, rumors that are gonna expire October 1st are gonna be in that expiring queue. So you can actually take a look at what people had previously submitted 
and then track those rumors to say, oh yeah, that's what's going on. And then very the cool. recently submitted, such as the Office rumor that came out that's going to be, Office is going to be shipping very soon, or the beta will be shipping very soon, yeah. end up in the right column. And or like, like I, I've seen lots of rumors this summer that iPad, uh, Office will be on iPad. Exactly. It hasn't shipped yet. Yeah, right? the Daily kept reporting that, yeah. and they kept claiming those images, and the funny thing, Microsoft actually said those images were fake. Well, we'll find out here in a little bit. And so you'll have that recently submitted, so you can actually check to see, okay, these are the rumors that have hit the wire in the past couple days that are gonna be expiring, who knows how far down the road. Yeah. And what happens is, is when you search, and there's also different ways to click through, for example, let's say you search DigiTimes. You will be taken to DigiTimes, what we call domain page, and you'll see their column on the left will be all of the rumors, and then all their statistics are on the right. And at the right top, you will see a hard number applied to DigiTimes. That is their general score. Yeah. In the second graph down below, you'll see their accuracy over time. So if DigiTime gets a couple wrong in the past you know, six months, you, they'll be trending down. So you can say, oh, well, DigiTimes are, are losing their source. But if over time it's trending up, you can say, okay, well, they probably got some good information. They had some in the bad in the past, but now they're trending in the right direction. And then at the bottom there, you'll see a pie chart. And that pie chart actually breaks up all the ranked rumors yeah. and how they were ranked. So you might see 10 at 100%. You might be see 7 at 50%, which means they got some right, some wrong. And you might see 10 at um, 0%, which means they were flat out wrong. Yeah. Is, is there any way for uh, you to watch the curators or repeaters of information? Because a lot of times a kid in China will put some information in there, and then other people will repeat it. Certainly. And certain. I want to watch who repeats the accurate information because they might have insight that the kid or me doesn't have. Certainly. Anything that has a hard domain that has a URL to it, we can track. As long as they have a URL and it's not somebody talking at a coffee shop, we're good to go. So if you, as long as that information gets plugged in, we can begin tracking. For example, um, a perfect one is MS Nerd. Uh, he used to have a site, now he only tweets things, and we're actually tracking his Twitter account because now we can see how accurate his Twitter account is over time. Yeah. And so yes, that type of information, long term, we would actually love to see the people, um, when a rumor hits the wire, who actually rewrite the content to see if they are mentally filtering it. Because if somebody says, Apple's gonna come out with a 15-inch iPad, and we're like, well, that's probably not true, but then like only three sites rewrite it, it's like they're not thinking through what they're actually writing. So then yeah. we can begin to, document how the rewriters are, are receiving the information and if they truly are rewriting or if they're actually thinking about and applying some cohesive thought to it. Yep. Where can we learn more about it? Uh, you can come to our website, tracour.com, click the About page. You'll see a, a plethora of information there and my email is right at the bottom. You can contact me anytime and we'll get in touch. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming out. It's really, I really love your work. Appreciate it, Robert. Mm -hmm.